So, yeah, my name is Hugh Taylor. I'm External Affairs Director for UCAS in the United Kingdom. So, who is UCAS and what do we do? Well, we're the UK's national accreditation body. We have peers across Europe and across the world. So, for instance, COFREC in France, DAX in Germany, uh, SAS, Swiss Accreditation Service in Switzerland. And as, as Charles will know, he's probably smiling, but in the UK, SAS is our most elite military unit. So I think I should get a transfer because it'd be a lot more cool to say I work with SAS, but not nearly as cool as saying I work for Lego. But what we do is we accredit organisations who certify products, processes, services. The phrase that's sometimes used is we're that we check the checkers to make sure they're competent and, and doing a good job. And we work with government, trade bodies, consumer organisations. What we do can involve regulation. It may be light touch alternative to regulation. Uh, and we ourselves are not a regulator. And we work in all sectors, healthcare, food, engineering, just about any sector you can imagine. Uh, and increasingly sectors like uh, financial services uh, and AI related activities are, are coming into this for obvious reasons. And the, the role we fulfill is covered by, uh, it's a national role, it's covered by uh, an, an EU regulation, as you will see there. Uh, and please don't think that in two days time, the UK is going to be towed out into the middle of the Atlantic, um, because we're still part of Europe, a bit like Switzerland. Um, and, and we in UCAS will still be following these uh, EU regulations, which will be transposed into British law. So what's our interest then, <coughs> excuse me, in, in AI and governance? As I've said, we are the national accreditation body for the UK, uh, and our role is to provide assurance and confidence to government, businesses and consumers. And the concept behind accreditation and certification, which it's closely related to, is this idea of certified once or tested once and accepted everywhere. And if you think about it, that has a huge impact on domestic and international trade um, with all the talk that's going on around trade agreements around the world, not just for the UK and Brexit, but yeah, between Europe and America, between America and China, etc. So having this concept does help promote international trade. But of course, as we move into the world of AI, providing that assurance and confidence does become increasingly difficult. It used to be quite easy to go into uh, an organisation, a company or a manufacturer, and just say, show me how you do this. And increasingly, the show me is hidden in cyberspace somewhere, and there are algorithms behind it. And it's much more difficult to, uh, much more difficult to, to understand. So how can we make sure that we provide insurance, the assurance in a less transparent way in a more virtual world? And how do we keep up with the pace of change? And I was reading a book by Klaus Schwab from the World Economic Forum recently, in which he stated that mobile phones took 18 years to reach 100 million users. Facebook, when it launched in 2004, took five years. And Candy Crush in 2012 took less than a year. So that's just an, uh, an example of the pace of change that we're faced with. So what's happening in the UK? Well, we feel we are fairly advanced with AI and, and the fourth industrial revolution. We have a government that's quite open to new ideas. And as Charles has mentioned, autonomous vehicles, things like Airbnb and Uber have had a lot less problems than perhaps elsewhere in, in launching in the UK. But we ourselves are working with UK government on the fourth industrial revolution and how that can, uh, can be regulated and what sort of governance is required. We need to be agile and responsive though. Things are moving very quickly and we don't have all the, all the answers right now. So what are the big issues? I think we've probably heard most of these already, so I won't go in, into any great detail. Trust, Charles has mentioned Cambridge Analytica, um, things like the VW emissions scandal, all these things damage consumer trust. Ethics, I'm not going to go into that. We've heard quite a lot of that already. Bias, transparency. Pace of change, which I think is a real challenge for us because things like standards and governments do not move quickly. They tend to be slow moving and conservative. And all of that comes down to what will our regulation and governments look like. And there's probably one more big issue that I haven't even mentioned on here. And if, if Greta was here, she would remind me. And that's the environment and probably the need to make the protection of the environment an important consideration. 
So, in summary, a lot of questions and not as many answers yet. Thank you. Thank you, Hugh. Um, you, you mentioned actually pace of change, and I think this is, this is what I'd like to just feel a little bit more from you. How do you go about it? Uh, we know that today, even OECD is talking about a pacing problem. So the regulator is really running behind and, and, and kind of always trying to be uh, catching up, but it's not, it's not fast enough. Yeah. So um, we need obviously expertise that is very often in the private mm -hmm. hands. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So how can we ensure this uh, uh, having people on board, but also having uh, um, a neutral eye on that, mm -hmm. right? Well, and where, I, how do you go about it today? I, I, I'm sorry to, to say it, but I, I think the solution will follow late behind and it will take something to go wrong. I mean, I, I have a bit of a background in healthcare and some of the AI systems there for diagnosis of, of conditions. In the UK alone, I can think of between 10 and 15 such systems either in operation or being developed. You multiply that worldwide because healthcare conditions are common across the world. You know, there could be anything like 100 different systems out there. How do we know they all work? How do we know they're comparable? How do we know they give the right answers? And I don't think the regulation is going to catch up until something bad happens. Uh, and I think that's the sad, the sad answer. Thank you.